All right, trickers and trickers, time for the second episode of View the Day with Ship in a Bottle. Data and the Forge are enjoying a Sherlock Holmes holodeck program when the two noticed that a character programmed to be left-handed was actually right-handed. They call Lieutenant Barkley to repair the holodeck, but as he checks the status of the Sherlock Holmes programs, he encounters an area of protected memory. He activates it to find the artificial sentient Professor James Moriarty character projected into the holodeck who appears to have memory since his creation, including during the period while he was inactive, a feat Picard claims to be impossible. Moriarty wishes to escape the artificial world of the holodeck as was, and was assured by the crew of the Enterprise that they would endeavor to find a way to free him, and is irritated at the lack of results on the part of the crew and seeing their lack of even the tiniest bit of effort. Picard, along with Data and Barkley, attempts to assure Moriarty that they are still working on that goal, but Moriarty is dismissive of that. Moriarty confuses the crew by seemingly willing himself to existence by walking up the holodeck. He explains this to the stump Picard and Data by saying, I think, therefore I am. Moriarty creates a companion for himself, the Countess Regina Bartholomew, commanding the computer of the Enterprise to place another sentient mind within a female character of the holodeck the yeah, female character of the Sherlock Holmes novels. Moriarty then demands that a solution to get Regina off the holodeck be devised. He takes control of the Enterprise through the computer, insisting that a way be found for, de for her, insisting that a way be found for her to experience life beyond the confines of the holodeck. While assisting the Forge, Data observes that the Forge's handi handedness is incorrect, just as they had experienced earlier. Data determines that he, Picard, and Barkley never left the holodeck, and everyone and everything that appears to be the Enterprise is part of a holodeck program, Moriarty created. At that moment, Picard realizes he has unwillingly provided Moriarty with the command codes for the Enterprise. With this information, Moriarty takes control of the real Enterprise from within his simulation. Oh boy. Captain Picard finds a way to program the holodeck simulation of a holodeck to convince Moriarty that he or Gina can be beamed into the real world, though in fact they are only beamed into the holodeck simulation. Moriarty, satisfied with the ruse, releases control of the ship back to Picard. He and the Countess use a shuttlecraft given to them by Commander Riker to leave the Enterprise and explore the galaxy. Picard ends the simulation and returns to the real Enterprise. Barkley extracts the memory cube from the holodeck and sets it in an extended memory device in order to provide Moriarty and the Countess a lifetime of exploration and adventure. Picard mentions the possibility that the crew's reality may actually be a fabrication created by a little device sitting on someone's table. This nerves Barkley enough for him to test the, na the nature of his own reality one more time. He gives an audible command to end program to test whether he is still in a simulation. There is no response. Yeah, so that probably means that, yeah, everything worked out for the best. <laughs> so I say this is a pretty darn good episode, and seeing Moriarty again was actually kind of cool. Even though this is the last time we'll see him, but it was so cool to see him again anyway. So overall, I give ship in a bottle. Four warp cores out of five. Well, join me soon as we take a look at Aquiel. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.